Hi, it's Dr. Tash. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to do little mini workouts in your office space. Health is movement. Movement is health. As James Brown used to sing it, get up, get into it, get involved. Hello, it's Tash. One thing I like to do in my rooms is to keep good music, good speakers. This is a really nice example of a good speaker called a U-Boom. It's great because it also doubles as an extra little hand weight. So here in my office, I have a little box that's tucked away neatly in the corner. It's a box full of fitness goodies. To demonstrate how we can use all these little bits of equipment, I've asked Alex Ballesteros from Body by Noddy along to have a chat with us today. So, what do I do with this thing? This oh. is the massage ball. What do we do with the massage ball? We do many things with it. I'm going to recommend one of the main things, especially for women that are wearing high heels a lot in the office. Mm -hmm. You basically take your shoes off, massage the bottom of the feet, so the muscles and the fascia in the bottom of the feet are really important. They can get quite tight and they can lock up some of the, uh, the tissues upstream. So we want to make sure we keep that nice and supple. A spiky ball. A spiky ball uh, gets a little bit more intricate, so it gets mm -hmm. onto specific points rather than kind of gross massage. Mm -hmm. And I would use this more for like getting into your glutes or your hamstrings or something like that. So do you just sit on it? How do you, how do, you do that? Um, well, I can show you how to use it if you like. Sure. So we've got the spiky ball here. First, we're going to pop it under the glutes like this. Make sure it's on the top half of the glute, but not underneath the bottom, because we don't want to impinge the sciatic nerve. So put the uh, leg at roughly 90 degrees, you can move on top of it and you can also pull that knee backwards and forwards doing it to pain tolerance on a scale of 1 to 10 in pain we don't want to go anything over a 7 because you're going to cause harm so the next one is under the hamstring like this you're going to pop it underneath like that then side to side and you can floss that foot up and down like that uh, ankle weights but you can use these as, as hand weights as well, can't yes, you? Yes, of course, okay. depending on, you know, you can use them from anything from rehabilitation to working your butt, get a nice butt, work your legs as well. So. Obviously, you know, we've got our hand weights, which are pretty self-explanatory. I've also got the rollerball. What can we do with the rollerball? Okay, so we're using the roller here. We're going to work the calf. These can get quite tight if you're wearing high heels um, or standing up all day. So the way that we're going to roll them is the easiest option is going to be just the weight of one leg, finding just above the Achilles tendon, rolling side to side. If there's no pain, we're going to move up the leg. We're going to keep working in that fashion all the way up to just below the knee. Uh, as I've said previously, if you get on a pain scale of 1 to 10 above a 7, then you know to stop. That's not going to give you any benefit. So if you find that all the way up the calf is not sore at all, work from the bottom. Again, pop the other leg on top to give you a bit of extra weight. And if you really are a, a hardcore, you can get the hips up and then work like that. And resistance band? Resistance band, we like to use that mainly for rehabilitation purposes, but we can get a nice butt and leg workout with that. And we've got a cord. So I find that's a little bit more versatile as far as giving you a uh, whole body workout. We can work the arms, the shoulders, get the legs working too. Okay, so we've got our resistance tube, resistance cord, whatever you want to call it. We're going to show you a really good butt exercise and leg exercise here. So we're going to pop it, very important, under the arches of the feet. Enough tension so it's not too easy, not too um, tense so that you can't move your feet. I'm going to cross them over into an X. Having the toes facing straight forward, we're going to do a little squat with the knees. We're going to push one foot out, the other foot out. If you uh, find that your toes are pointing out a little bit, make sure to turn them in to feel it in the butt. So out, out. Then we're going to go for a little squat after that. After the squat, back into that. Working sets of 
So about four sets of 12 to 15. favourite piece of equipment, uh, core ball, twist ball, it's got a few different names, but we're going to show you how to use it, especially sitting on it during yeah. I, I uh, love sitting on this core ball, it's changed my life, love it, love it, I've gotten rid of my, my chair. Yeah, I would get rid of it, and especially if you can alternate between a Swiss ball and a standing desk, you're in, uh, you're in heaven there. Yeah, and you don't need a proper standing desk, um, when you're saying that you use books? Yep. At home I've just books. got some textbooks, so I can use like a crate this box here. Okay, so we're going to do some little exercises on our Swiss ball here. The first one is really good if you're just sitting at the desk for a long period or you want to get the lower back moving. Quite good for people with digestive issues, uh, issues with the sex organs or just lower back issues in general. So it's what we call a figure eight. So we're going to move the hip to one side, come forward, back, diagonally, forward, back and diagonally the other way. So basically just drawing an eight with your hips and you can just do that all day, really. And that's just gonna get the core engaged on a very low level, quite good for the pelvic floor and good for the, uh, it helps to massage the digestive organs as well. So the second exercise we're gonna go for is called a curl to press. So we're gonna use our little hand weights here. One uh, caveat to this is if you do have shoulder or neck pain or really poor posture, I probably don't recommend the second half of the exercise just go with the first half. So we're going to sit nice and tall in the chair, chin in so the spine's in neutral. We're going to draw the belly in to activate the core. We're going to curl up and we're going to press the dumbbells overhead. The arms should be just beside the ears, not any forwards than that. We're going to come back down nice and slow, control to the shoulders and then back down in the curl. And you would repeat that depending on how strong you are, but up to 12 to 15 times to get those arms and shoulders nice and tight. So I, I hope you've enjoyed Alex's uh, tips today. I know I'm really grateful for them. And the reason why is because I do a lot of sitting during the day. I do a lot of letter typing, letter dictation. Um, and I find that quite tricky because I'm just sitting down all day. Pretty much what I'm looking forward to now is doing repetitions by using some of this equipment between each letter or each batch of letters, for example. So that then when I walk away from my desk at the end of the day, I don't feel like a slob. Alex, closing remarks? Move, basically move as often as you can. Don't, uh, you know, if you have to sit down, use some of the tips that we've gone through today with tools and, and reverse some of that, uh, the damage of sitting down. Thank you for watching this episode of Dr. Tash TV. I hope you've made James Brown proud. If you've enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until next time, be well.